Hello and welcome to Smallbox. I'm Andy and this is Whiskey Review number 7. Now, yes, we are taking a trip back to Isla again uh, for this next review. And what I have is um, a very popular whiskey. Um, it's one of my personal favourites. It's always in my, my collection, always on the shelf. Um, and that is the one, the only, the Ardbeg 10 year old. Now, I did do a review of the Ardbeg 10 um, when I, I ran the old version of the blog, the affordable whiskey reviews blog. But I figured, you know, three years down the line, that's gone, let's do it again. So, it's a new bottle, it's a newer bottle, obviously, it's not three years old. I mean, that'd be a crying shame. I don't think a bottle of whiskey lasts three years in my house. Um, so, <clears throat> our bag. Lovely packaging, though, isn't it? Just like the green and the kind of like Celtic uh, patterns on it. Um, our bag, Isla Distillery, capacity of about 1.3 million litres a year. Uh, it's owned by Glenmorangie Group, which in turn is owned by Moe Hennessy of Champagne fame. Now, our bag was actually mothballed and closed for quite a few years. And um, it reopened and it's come back to huge acclaim. Um, it's very popular now. They have special releases every year, uh, which I'm sure you've heard of some of them. Namely, our uh, Bog, uh, Kidalton, Supernova, uh, Oriverdes, uh, etc. Now, the 10 year old is their entry level bottling. It's fantastic. It's another distillery that still has an age statement on their standard whiskey. Um, you can pick this up for around 35, 40 quid. And do you know what? Hopefully you'll be able to see it. On the label right there, non-chill filtered. 46% 36 to 40 quid you know um, to be honest I can't remember off the top of my head if it's uh, natural colour let's just have a look see if you can see it on the box nope doesn't say it's still quite light though as you can see there so, uh, well, we might add something to it, I suppose. I mean, I saw something a few years ago um, that hinted that um, our bag was, well, the 10 year old, sorry, was matured exclusively in X, um, X bourbon. Um, whether that's true or not, couldn't tell you, but I mean, there's undoubtedly refills in this somewhere along the line. So, without further ado, let's, uh, let's give it a nose, get it around the glass first. There we go. It's nice legs on it as well, though. Nice tears. Nice and slow. Um, right, okay. The nose. Um, orange peel. Orange zest. Um, I'm also getting... Um, asphalt, so you know when people are tarmacking the roads, um, I'm getting sort of like a, a, a smokiness in there, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like a soft fruity tobacco, um, quite kind of nose. There's a few herbs in there, it's, it's quite herbally, sort of like a dry grassy note as well. There's a bit of soapiness in there, but it's not a bad thing. You might associate sort of like a soapy note with being a negative thing but it's not, it's more of a perfume kind of note than anything else. It's dissipating a little bit now. It's kind of like a licorice note in there as well. 
more like a licorice root, you know, the kind of things you can buy at old school sweet shops and chew. To be honest, I, I wouldn't have known about them if my mum and dad hadn't they told me about them um, and, and forced them on me when I was a child. Oh, dark times, the 60s. Wet pebbles. Kind of, yeah, kind of a tariness. So going back to that sort of like asphalt tarmac now, but it's pleasant, it's weird. It's one of those things, if you're driving past somebody, like a crew that are tarmac in the road, and you get a whiff of it, you think, well, that's strong. But at the same time, it's actually strangely, alluringly pleasant. Vanilla in there as well. There, to be fair, I probably didn't pick it up as soon, as soon as I could have done, but there is a lot of vanilla in there. It's a good nose. It, for, I mean, a 10-year-old whiskey, it's, it really does stand up to itself. It does fantastically well. And do you know what I think is quite quite key to that? It's the 46%. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of distilleries bottle it at 40%. Some do 43, which is certainly an improvement, but 46, I think, is the sweet spot, in my opinion, for, um, for single malts, that obviously aren't single cast, cast strength. I think 46 is probably the sweet spot. It works for me, anyway. Right, on the palette. So well constructed. Coffee beans, or ground coffee, freshly ground coffee. Black, no milk. One sugar please. Um, there's that tobacco note there as well. It's coming on even stronger now. The vanilla's there, the citrus is there as well. It's also quite creamy at the same time. It's got that lovely oily consistency. Um, lemon rind. Kind of similar to the orange, um, orangey notes um, on the nose. Finish, I'd say it's sort of like a medium length. It's not the longest finish in the world, but certainly not the shortest. Going back to the nose, it's kind of like um, like a boiled sweet. Um, no, as well, so like rhubarb and custards or pear drops. Pear drops works like pretty well. I'm just gonna have one more uh, little drop of this. Now I'm, uh, I'm gonna put a bit of water in it, see what that does. Just topping up the tine a little bit. Don't want to water it down too much, see. Mm. There's a, a kind of smoked meatiness in there as well, um, so you might get some sort of very heavily smoked bacon um, or like a nice smoked Italian ham or something. It's very savoury in character, um, but it's very intertwined uh, sweetness in there as well. It's good. It's good. Right. I'm going to put a drop of water in it. Got to be careful because I've got my spoon, so I've got my jug. Rookie error. Ah, there you go. That'll do you. Yeah. Now, as well as the 10 year old, um, the next one up, as it were, in the range is the uh, Ugadal, um, which is uh, quite heavily sherried um, our bag, um, but that's a no age statement. The one above that, above, in the line, is uh, Corriveken. Um, sorry, sorry, it's all of a puddle in there. Um, and that, that again, is, um, is quite heavily sherried, but again, it's a no age statement. Um, as are the vast majority, in fact I think all of them in recent years, of the special releases um, that come out for about 100 quid, there or thereabouts. Don't quote me on because I'll never buy them. Mainly because I'm too slow to buy them. 
Right. Yeah, the water's actually taken the fruitiness away from it for me. Um, you still got that kind of tarry note. Um, again, it's not unpleasant. The the sweetness the sweetness is gone. <laughs> so there's no other way of putting it. It's kind of like a burning leaf kind of thing, you know, if somebody's burning leaves in the garden. Um, or like a damp, damp leaf kind of thing. Sort of savoury uh, spices in there as well, kind of like a, a paprika in the background, maybe. Well, I'll say that now I'm getting a bit of candy floss as well. Let's see what it, uh, see what it does on the palate now with a bit of water in there. Actually adds to the mouthfeel a little bit, as daft as it sounds. Actually makes it even more cream-like on the palate. It's very smooth. Unlike the nose, it's actually detracted a little bit from the smoke. Um, but it's very savoury. It's still got that kind of like smoked meat flavour in there. Um, also, I've got kind of like a, a toast, um, like a marmalade on toast kind of note as well, which I haven't actually got before with this. Again, a bit of pipe smoke, a bit of pipe tobacco. Hmm, what else is it? Can't get it. Very hard, this tasting note, no like, you know. There's kind of soft black pepper in there as well. Finish is a bit shorter. In summer, I prefer it without water. A lot smoother with, but it's not rough to start with. Um, so for me, it doesn't really need it. Um, so on that note, the score. Um, it's well constructed. It's affordable. It's non-chill filtered. Forty-six percent. I'll give it. 87 out of 100, I think. 87. It's a good score. Good whiskey. Um, again, you can find it in some supermarkets. I think Tesco's, I think I've been more successful in finding it in Tesco's. Widely available online, um, as, you, as you well expect. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Um, in the meantime, once again, if you want to uh, send me a tweet or follow me on Twitter, uh, my tag is at Maltbox, all one word. Drop me an email, maltbox at gmail.com. The blog, maltbox.blogspot.co.uk. Um, I'll also have another piece of malt music to accompany this drum. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I've been Andy. See you soon.